today on the back pocket we have Chad Hegard, founder of Cheeks, uh, one of the coolest uh, and more sus- most sustainable, just cool looking freaking clothing brands out there. Um, Chad, welcome to the back pocket, brother. Yeah, thank you, Declan. Thanks for Andrew for having me. This is awesome. So- yes, and we were able to get connected through um, Sam, uh, yep. one of the co-founders of ha- uh, Hippie Feet. Yep. And, uh, I mean, what a cool little start to the podcast. We've never met. We were just talking off air. Um, you're an uptown guy, which rocks in general. I mean, r- automatic connection right there. And you just so happen to be moving into the similar area to where uh, the back pocket really found its roots in, uh, in, that, in that region of, uh, of uh, uptown. I'm not going to give away any addresses, right? Because, you know, we got thousands, millions of listeners. Oof, we don't want God. people out of front door. <laughs> right on. Uh, Chad, I, I just recently uh, realized I, I just got some in, intel and I really want to start here. So um, <laughs> you started Cheeks not too long ago, which um, oh, yeah. I'll let you do the explaining of what Cheeks is. But uh, Sam's texting me here as we're at who challenges, as Andrew mentioned, he's texting me right now. And he said that you lived in China during COVID. And this is where you started Cheeks. Yeah, dude. Yeah, um, please explain. Yeah, actually, just I got back from China about a year ago. Oh, yeah, thirteen months ago. Um, so I was there for a big portion of of COVID. Wow. Um, yeah, it was a. So I ended up. I had a friend that was coming to visit me in China on the twenty ninth or the twenty sixth of January. Um, got got the visa, everything. He's heading on the way, and right before he was leaving, it was like, ah, he already went through this. Like, it's not that bad. We can't, I can't tell him not to at this point, you know. Um, but the flight there is pretty long, and during that period of time, it went from, oh, it's going to be fine, to, oh wow, um, we got to figure out what, what. So I picked him up. The whole everything was shut down. Picked him up at the airport. We went back to uh, my little hutong, which is like a little apartment uh it's kind of the traditional chinese apartment style and did one day and the next day we went to a restaurant where you know you can't avoid checking your the news and stuff and it was like shit this is uh this is getting to be a little bit you know he's got a job in chicago he can't be stuck in china i'm like what are we gonna do here you know what's gonna happen uh so he ended up making we we stayed there for probably yeah 32 hours uh, or he stayed there for 32 hours i ended up getting on a flight right following him uh went back for a month and then uh actually returned there uh february 26th to china or to the united states to china so i returned wow. for a month um and then headed back actually and stayed the rest of that time nice. there so what brought you to china originally Oof. Um, I studied in China. Okay. So I went, I went to St. Thomas as well. Oh. Um, so fellow Tommy. yeah, who would have known? Yeah. Fellow Tommy. What, gra- what, uh, what year did you graduate? 2016. Oh, sure. Okay. So you're two years older than we are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. On. Excellent. But, uh, yeah. So I studied abroad in China when I was at St. Thomas. Um, I kind of, I think at the time it was like, oh, I'm going to go to China. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be really hard. It's probably not going to be that much fun, but it's going to be like, I'm, you know, I'm interested in international business, so it's going to be good, whatever. And I went there and it was phenomenal. Like it was just one of the most fun, interesting places in the world. And so I knew when I finished that, I knew at some point I was going to return. Um, and it turned out that I'd been working at this company for three years and knew I, or like two and a half years. And I was just like, you know, wasn't what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I was a little, I was kind of in this stage where I was like, I don't want to get into the next thing without, I don't want to just get into the next thing just to do it. I want it to be what I want to do. Um, and so I was like, this is the perfect time and ended up actually getting on a bicycle before China and then going from there to China. So I, uh, yeah, it was, a the last couple of years, the last three years have been a, a ride. Dude, perfect time yeah. to record a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let's unpack these last few years. Okay, so you, you jumped on a bicycle. What does that mean? You, you Yeah. Uh, a motorcycle? No, a, like a pedal bicycle. Um, 
I, yeah, I, I just, I had this time between when my job started in China and wanted to have like, do you want to like this kind of adventure? And I had no idea if it was going to be a three week thing and I would just sell the bicycle. You know, I went to Greece, I flew to Athens. I bought a bicycle off the street. It was like a pretty cheap bicycle. And I bought a carriage off of Amazon that was rated for a hundred pounds. Um, and I put my backpack in the carriage and left Athens thinking, you know, if, if, if I go three weeks and I don't love it, I'll, you know, and I'll figure it out and I'll do, do travel a different way. Um, ended up going, you know, I went through 10, 10 different countries, uh, on a bicycle. Dude. And then how long did this take longer than three weeks? I would imagine. Yeah. It went about four, about four months. Wow. Uh, Dude, that is amazing. So yeah, it was, is this something like, I mean, we're, we're shocked as, cause we just met you, but like, is this something that you always had a niche for? Like, I'm going to just, I'm just going to throw myself out there into the world and not worry about anything except getting from like, just going on a bicycle to Greece. Like what, what, what was kind of the inklings or what was maybe the, the push to want to do this originally? Um, so the bicycle, I wasn't a big bicycler before. Actually, I never, I'd owned one bike. It got stolen uh, when I was in college. Um, and that always happens at St. Thomas. You can't not be actually, a student yeah, at St. So, Thomas without getting your bike stolen. Yeah, I actually, that, I did not get my bike stolen at St. Thomas then. So I originally left and went to University of Arizona. Um, had a little too much fun and realized I'm not learning much here. Um, and ended up moving, made the decision. I was like, you know, I'm getting by. Uh, but I'm not like I'm getting by because I know how to get how to get 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 by. You know, I could figure it out. Uh, but I wasn't really gaining much from the experience besides, you know, being there. I guess I learned a lot about myself, not much school wise. Um, and so ended up moving. Yeah. Transferring to St. Thomas and finished there. So my bike got stolen in Arizona, in Tucson, in Tucson okay. with the dirty T. And that's also not shocking. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, so yeah, but the bike trip was just, I, I think it was not very planned out to be honest. It was more so, you know, well, I'm going to get really like kind of weird and like deep into it right away. But I think no, let's it get was, weird. let's get weird, man. Yeah. I think, yeah, I'm, I'm in, um, I have always, like I was an extrovert always I was uh, in sales I was always able to focus in if I'm in in a meeting with someone I can I'm zoned in on that person and there's nothing else I am alone and I've got 10 different things in my head I will be reading a book and I will really struggle to focus and to be alone and so I think part of the bike trip it ended up being like you know for the weeks coming up I get really excited I was like this is you know I got to figure out how to be alone how to be solo for a long time and like be in my own head and be okay with that and, and i have no idea if i figured it out you know some days i'm like ah, oh, i got got a lot out of it some days i'm like i don't know if i probably got worse um but yeah that was one of the the one thing is i was just never like if i was away from people i wasn't uh, my mind was racing uh and so it was like all right i'm gonna go and figure out how to be okay alone <laughs> yeah man and that you did you it was you uh a carriage that can hold 100 pounds and a miscellaneous plan of you want to see some countries on a bike um yeah. and like let's like just like a couple days in maybe a weekend um any like was it like to be expected you were able to just kind of like maneuver through a country find a little place to stay meet some people like, well, what was kind of like the ordeal? Was there some uh, trials and tribulations along the way? Yeah. Um, the big thing that I learned really quickly is, I mean, in this sound, this shows how, how, how little I had thought through this. But um, the, the padded, you know, the, the butt pain of riding as long as I was riding was horrible and i've just recently this year i was like i want to get back and like, i want to get into biking um and i realized that that is not something that just goes with biking like th there are adjustments that can be made to fix that and i think 
I just thought that that was part of the sport and just kept on going. And, uh, and it was painful. I was in a lot of pain. I remember the first day I'm calculating in my head, you know, numbers guy. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go this speed. I'm going to go this far. Oh, it's going to take me like, it'll take me five hours, you know? And, and I was going the first, the first day I was going 78 miles with a carriage and through Athens, which is not a spot where you, you buy, I mean, they, people don't bike in Athens. It's not Copenhagen or like, it's not a fun, it's not the greenway, Minneapolis. You're, you're on the streets and there is no sidewalk. It is dangerous. And so I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. Like what streets do I go on? Um, yeah. And it, I, I biked until really late, really late. Uh, just to figure out to the next, yeah, to get to the next place that I'd plan on getting to. So that was a, immediately I learned, all right, I'm not going to go at the speed I thought I was going to go. Uh, I need to decide how, you know, where am I going to, where I need to make those next steps a little bit shorter. Um, but the beauty of it is like, got there, sore. But there's no one that needs to. I didn't have anywhere to go. So, like, if I wanted to, I stay there for a couple of days, and then I see the area, and that's the beauty of, I guess, being alone, and then also not having a schedule. Totally. Yeah, I think the the first thing that comes to mind is like this idea that you're like really soaking in each cultural and culture and each environment as you kind of are going along, and taking it at this very very slow pace that not a lot of people can you know grasp and so that perspective alone is just really cool and then the other thing i really like is the challenge that you gave yourself of like knowing that you're a ma massive extrovert um i'm a massive extrovert myself just knowing like that you need to have some alone time or you need to understand what that alone time feels like and like just sounds like the combination of like immersing yourself in culture with being alone and kind of being on your own schedule it sounds like the the combination of those two uh, was incredibly fruitful for you. Yeah, it was awesome. It was it was good. The, the uh, best adventure, yeah, for me. So, ever. on yeah, on in in some of that adventure, are, are there any like crazy stories or adventurous stories that uh, you could potentially share here? I've got I got one that comes to mind. Um, I was. This is pretty late in the trip, and I think my, you know, I was kind of figuring out, and I was like, all right, this is this is good, and I, and I'm in Serbia, um, and I'm on my way to Kosovo, and most, I mean, I didn't know this much before, but you know, those they're they're at war. Uh, Serbia considers Kosovo, or Kosovo considers themselves their own country. Uh, while Serbia considers Kosovo part of theirs. So Serbia has like a checkpoint to go through, but not it's not technically like a, you know, a border control. Um, and but Kosovo would have it going going out. Um, so that's just backstory. But I, I'm biking and I'm looking on this path and I'm seeing like on Google Maps, which I should have assumed Google Maps is right. But um, on Google Maps, it said I had to go to this one, like way out of the way, to go to this one checkpoint. But on Apple Maps, for whatever reason, there was like a big road, like I could, it was a visible road on the map that that went right over the border and went to the, this next city that I needed to go to. And um, I was like, well, you know, this, this isn't this isn't really a border, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go. And so I start going up. Uh, I remember. I'm going up this hill and there's these four Serbian kids who are biking after me, like talking, you know, just being like, what, what is this guy doing? You know, talking the whole time. But at a certain point they go off and do their own thing. And, and I, I hit a dirt road and I realized, all right, this road is not nearly as big as it looked like on the map. And I'm keeping going, I'm going uphill the whole time. Uh, and I get to the top and finally, you know, go down and I see these little, basically like little trailers um that looked like it used to be a uh customs check uh or a yeah a boarding a border, security checkpoint yeah, a little border um and but it looked like it was abandoned 
So I just, I was almost going to bike right through and two guys, one big bald guy, one shoulder guy came out and, uh, looked at me like I was out of my mind. And the one thing, like if you, if you're on a motorcycle or in a car, you're a threat to people. And so in any country, like people just don't welcome you in, but when you're on a bicycle, people think you're insane or they think you're like really harmless, you know? So I would get welcomed into people's houses. People would stop me up. this like, cause they just are, they're just, you know, weirded out that you're biking. Um, and so this guy was looking at me with that look, what the hell is this guy doing? And I handed him my passport and he was like, I, this isn't a security checkpoint. Like you got to go back that way. And I was like, what do you mean? You know? And I, I kind of in my head, I was like, I know this isn't a security check. Like, I know this isn't uh, official, you know, like I can, I can work this out. And so I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm like, what do you, what does that mean? Where, where do I have to go? And even though I did see the map and they're like, oh, you have to go this way. I'm like, where am I going to sleep tonight? Like what's, you know, I, I just, I knew they were going to let me do it. Um, and, but they, for a while I was like, Oh, I don't, he, they're not going to, they're not going to agree to this. I actually, I was very surprised. I didn't have it. So I'm back and forth. This guy's calling his boss. The bald guy was on my side. He was like, dude, let this guy go. He's harmless. And the other guy's like, no, no, no. You know, this, he, he can't go through and they've got these, you know, these big machine guns, which they weren't confused, but still like a little intimidating. And, uh, and after about 10 minutes, I'm adjusting my, you know, I'm trying to just stall, like adjusting my uh, bag and like trying to look like I've got nothing, like I have no idea what I'm doing. And uh, at a certain point, the guy comes up and they're after talking a bunch and he, he puts up his hand and I I thought he was trying to give me a high five and say, you know, go back th that way. And he, he ended up just saying, go gas, go. And he ended up uh, letting me go through this border. And it was a very surreal thing that, you know, there, there are borders around the world. At the time, there were, there were some issues in other countries. And in, uh, in Israel, for example, there was really mess, you know, people were getting shot at the border. And this guy was just like, gas, gas, gas. And it was a, yeah, it was a weird thing. But that night, I ended up biking through a war zone that I found out the next day, which like Metro Vice, which is a little town north of Kosovo, is... Uh, yeah, I, I done. Have you guys ever heard of um, warm showers? It sounds like a it sounds like a sexual thing. It's a terrible name choice, but it is like couch surfing for bike biker ent enthusiasts. So if you want a place to stay, they can help fix up your bike. They'll give you a shower and a place to stay. And so I went to this one, and this guy was a diplomat. Uh, I expected like a local experience, and this guy comes up. He's like, "Hey, Chad, we're going to get steak and wine. You want to come?" And he was a U.S. diplomat in, uh, in yeah, in Kosovo. So, and he had told me that to where I biked through uh, was a war zone that he would need two armored vehicles to go through. So, dude, that story just kicks ass. Uh, absolutely kicks ass. Um, love the navigation of the situation too. I mean, that's, I'm assuming you've been on the road for a couple weeks. So you yeah. are being, you've gotten comfortable with like being that guy on the road, um, from, you know, like little kids surrounding you, uh, up yeah. a hill to <laughs> arriving into a sketchy situation, but playing the card of like, Oh no, like it's totally chill. I'm just a guy on a bike. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, to the point of you, like recognizing this guy might be friendly, let's give him a high five. And he's just like, Oh, I'm friendly, but you can't show any any love towards me gas 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 that just is the coolest situation um and I'm, I'm assuming happened time and time again in many different ways um and i think that's like that's your card that you get to play when you're an extrovert you know you you, you get to lean into that um but on the flip side you're alone constantly you just you rode through a war zone you had no idea um you're meeting all these people. You're you're riding on your bike for hours on an, on end. Um, before we transition off this uh, like the this journey, this exploration, I'm I'm curious from like someone that you announced pretty quickly, like, hey, I'm an extrovert. This is going to be a battle internally. Um, 
Declan mentioned he's an extrovert. I'm for sure an introvert. I love being by myself. Um, but really? I have like racing thoughts all the time. It's yeah. hard to sit with myself. Um, so I'm curious, like, how was that like riding? Like, what was going through your head when you were going through pain or when you found some like sense of joy, um, like internal dialogue? What will, like what was going through that realm? Yeah. Uh, I, the interesting thing about being alone for a long time is you start to, to in, a, in a fun way, like you start to kind of look like an insane person. Um, like, you know, I'm on a bike and I'm sometimes you're talking to yourself. Sometimes you're having conversation and just like trying to like work things out in your head. And when you're alone for that long, like if you do it after a day, you know, that, then you, you kind of think you're insane. But after eight days, you know, nine days of being alone, it's, you got to you got to kind of communicate with someone. So it's good to be yourself. Um, I guess that doesn't really answer your question, but like you're after a while, it. Yeah, it, it, becomes I, I, normal. it becomes normal, it becomes and, normal. And, yeah. you, and you do get comfortable, just like anything you do, you know, you do it for a while, and you just decide you're going to keep on doing it. it. It might not be what you're naturally what you naturally like or are good at, but you're, you're going to figure it out, likely. Um, or you got to switch your tactics. But you're going to, you know, you're going to figure out what. Yeah. Yeah, how I mean, to be how to be okay with it and then how to almost and then you have to figure out how to enjoy it you know there's two steps it's funny too like uh when when i was running uh in the moab uh 240 with uh so I, cool when i was pacing yeah no thank yeah. you i appreciate it. i would i would highly recommend like if anybody's listening that is thinking about getting into ultra marathons the best way to do it is to pace someone who's running it or just be a part of of that of a portion of the ultra marathon because I think the ultra marathon and running a distance of like 200 plus or 150 plus any long, long distance, the, the, just the mentality, the, the culture of the people, everything included with that race was just like one of the coolest experiences that I was able to be a part of an experience for one day of the four. Um, one of the crazier things though, that happened when we were on the trail, was you know we were probably we were in the middle of nowhere at one point uh as as there were many points along the moab trail that uh have these but you know we were getting to a certain point where we started realizing like cars were driving by and they were asking us like hey what are you guys doing like you guys look like a bunch of idiots uh running into oncoming traffic as it nears nightfall and uh you know you tell them we're running in, uh, as a part of we're running the mo we're running 240 miles what are you doing you know <laughs> uh but there's sections where we're running for a long time and not really saying much cuz we're tired and you finally like stop at an aid station and i remember we stopped at our last aid station after running 31 miles and we're we get there and like everyone's really quiet because everyone's like, all right, you know, we've been, we've been having these internal dialogues for seven miles, seven, eight miles or, or 31 miles. And, and we're exhausted. And the aid station people are like, do you want food? Do you need some tailwind? Like, do you need help with anything? Like they're very cautious. And like you, you don't want to say anything because it's like you're tired and you you're exhausted of you're not used to like communicating you've like almost forgotten uh so it's very interesting to to do that and like to to like immediately flip the switch and go right back into society um yeah. in that sense so i i can i hear what you're saying where it's like you know you spend way more time alone thinking and having internal dialogue and then all of a sudden you're uh approached by two bald men uh, uh who are at, you know who you now have to like go right back into sales mode so i could see how that's like crazy uh so while you were talking i was like looking up you know we're not i'm not i'm not going to say i'm the like the largest geography guy but um there's a lot of distance between china and greece so like oh yeah n no, no no i went to to Greece, yeah. did a, bi a bicycle ride around the the Balkans. Oh, I actually flew then from uh, from Turkey. That makes a lot of sense. Why you were in Kosovo or to China? Yeah, 
Okay. I was not. I didn't. That would have been. I did meet some people along the way, though. Interestingly, oh, right. that uh, that were doing that trip, and it's like a year. It's like a sixteen-month trip. Yeah, dude, I can imagine. From, uh, That's a long yeah. trip. It's a long. <laughs> That's long bananas. Time. So yeah. yeah, so you so you took the risk. You went on this bike trip. Um, mm-hmm. You got to see some cool ass places. If you have any recommendations of like places that we should go or like anybody listening should go, let us know. Um, but I also want to hear kind of your journey into China and that whole experience um, and like what you were doing there, man. Because it's, I've uh, just personally, I, I was in Thailand at the beginning of 2020 last year and oh, cool. uh, met a guy who had lived in China. You, you know, uh, he was an American teaching English in China and had yep. stayed there after graduation and was like, he was becoming, he was, he was becoming a teacher, but like didn't want to teach in the United States. He wanted to go somewhere else and like they needed an English teachers in yeah. China, like crazy. So he went there and then basically never left. Uh, and he had nothing but great things to say about China. And I was like, interesting. Like, I feel like they're like, I should recommend this to a lot more people in terms of like an avenue of like, if you want to be a teacher, and do something like this. But anyways, I'd love to hear, yeah. man, like your, your whole experience there. I'd love to hear kind of any, any, anything from the bike ride that like any places that you absolutely loved and would recommend, but I'd also love to hear this journey into China and how that was. Yeah. Well, I'll give two places and I won't say much more about it and then I'll shift into the China, but, uh, Albania is super people think of Albania cause they think of the movie taken and they think of like, uh, just gangs and, and like trafficking of people. Albania is incredible. Cool. Um, Georgia is, is one of the most beautiful. Yeah. There's, there's really? places north, north of Georgia that are really, really beautiful. Uh, so awesome. those would be the two places. Hell yeah, man. But, uh, yeah, China, I don't know. I think we, you, you kind of mentioned there, you said, Oh, he loved China, you know? And I think that that is a, a common, and I actually, you know, I deal with this quite often is I'm, I'm a pretty big China advocate. Uh, and, they, and there's been times where they've done some things that they will never, you know, that will be a stain on, on their country forever. But we have also done those things. And I think it's, you know, it's two empires that that are that are that the dialect between them has to be or like, you know, the conversations are going to be one way because they're two competing empires. China's been an empire that has fallen and got, got, gone back in power, might go back, you know. It's just like two big powers that are talking in, in a different way about their competitors. And so we have this this goofy uh, perspective and this idea of what China is. And China's awesome. Dude, I bet. It, yeah, yeah. It, is, it is interesting that they <laughs> there is a there is a bit of dialogue of like you know there's no denying that china is uh incredibly good at what they do and providing re- goods oh, and resources yeah. to the united states i mean you can't get away from any of that there's also a lot of problems with china that we don't necessarily need to get into but i'd love totally. to highlight your experiences in china and just like why you love it so much and and maybe stories and things associated with that um and and what was the job that you took when you went to china so i know you went you went out there over J term yep. and you know you know got the rigmarole there, international business etc. But then what did you end up uh, doing after that? When so I was actually time? so yeah I was studying and then I was also teaching just like the the friend you met in Thailand. English. Yeah, teaching English. Yep. No way. And did you have any yeah. background of like teaching English before you signed up for that or? No, I took a um, I took a TEF. It's a it's called TEFL. And it's like a teaching in a foreign language uh, certificate, which so a lot of these countries won't don't require any kind of uh, teaching degree, but they they do want some kind of certificate. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a few different options, but I took the TEFL, and it I took it online while I was working, and before I knew I wanted to leave, and I yeah, so I went there and I got a job. That's amazing. And, and what are the things like, so you've been there before, uh, yep. you know, you know, studying abroad. Um, what were some of the things, um, I, I, yeah, let's start with that. Let's, what are the, that, for that first time over there, study abroad trip, what were some of the things that made you come back? You mentioned how, you know, China rocks, you, you got yeah. the hug, you wanted to go back. What were some of those things? 
um, I think it's really easy here to get into like um, we do it and it's actually a good thing but we get into like auto I mean a routine which sometimes can turn into autopilot and you're going through your days without actually sitting back and actually realizing what you did and um, and that comes from just a place being super known which there is awesome things to having a place that you know everything you know there are amazing parts of that um, but there are also some things that you sometimes you can take a lot of things for granted mm -hmm. and so and days will fly by or, or yeah fly by without you realizing it but in china you can never get into autopilot there is never a boring day um because the culture is so different you you never like oh i expected that you know oh that makes sense it's 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 so different and and i think that's one of you know the chinese tourist and even the chinese would say this is one of the goofiest i don't want to say worst but goofiest tourists around because that people think they're rude but they don't mean to be it's a cultural difference that is just they're curious that western countries are so different from them uh we you know the french call it like we are very proper you know the the brits and the french really made us uh manners wise they brought this in and like so when we sit down at a table we we eat with our mouth closed and live this life and we won't fart or burp in front of people and their culture just didn't go through that so uh you know it's a it's just a different and and if you you could go there and be really like pissed off you know you could be like what the hell or you could just be like this is awesome this is crazy like th this is so different it it's funny and uh and it's enjoyable you know and the people are awesome once you get past and you just know that like it's so different and you just want to you gotta you gotta kind of take it and be like all right now i want to learn about it uh this difference is sweet yeah right on so one of the ventures i you, so you did you get into cheeks and start cheeks when you were over in china yeah so i originally so i was at a conference listening to sarah blakely the ceo of spanx who's a total badass um one of the first women but billionaires like just cool as hell um saw her at a conference and that's where this whole idea kind of collarless business apparel offering something new to that area came to be and a very different idea at that point but um then I went to China and it was all, even on the bike ride, this was something that was on my mind because that conference was literally a week before I left. Um, and so I was like, all right, that's been, that was circling in my mind for a long time throughout. Um, but China was, you know, when I got there, I was trying to learn from the, the experts. I was trying to like learn as much as I'd go down to different factories. I'd go down to these things just to learn about uh, how to make tex textiles. Um, but it wasn't, it didn't really all it didn't go into full motion until january of 2019 so i'd been there already for you know six months sweet dude so then when you like and talk to me like kind of behind i know you're wearing a cheek shirt right now for all the youtube lot uh viewers yeah. and uh, I did notice it like uh, off air. I mentioned, I was like, Oh dude, that's a cheek shirt. Like I I've seen that, uh, your style, uh, around like in, in, uh, when I followed you on Instagram and everything, I was like, Oh, this is like a cool, when you said collarless bu business apparel, like that's exactly what it is. But it also like, it looks incredibly like light, comfy and mm -hmm. very unique. Like it's a real bitch inversion to say you got a V neck on, I think is really what it looks like. Uh, yeah. So, like, talk me through, like, this, the inspiration to even want to get into this industry. I mean, Sarah, Sarah Blakely, obviously, is a portion of, you know, probably, uh, is, you, you mentioned that already as, as, a, as something that's fueled you already. But, like, what's the fascination behind uh, this type of apparel? Or, like, what were you seeing? Uh, I think originally it was just comfortable apparel. So, mm -hmm. originally it was, like, have you guys ever tried on, like, do you have a clothing item that, a brand that is that you just stick to because of comfort nowadays that you won't, you won't until something else comes out, you're going to stick to them. Um, so I, for the longest time, I'm, I'm stripes over checks all day long. Right. Um, big Adidas guy. 
Uh, but recently, I just went to, uh, you know, the Nolos over here in North Loop. Yeah. Um, my, one of my roommates went there and was like, dude, you got to check this place out. And the clothing line, Vuari, which I think is now like one of the top clothing brands um, across the world. Um, big fan. I like that's yeah. everything fits fucking great. Yeah. When you when you find something that fits you right, it, you're going to stick with it no matter what, you know. Um, and so I had tried on originally give them credit, Lululemon's commission pants came out. I was working and traveling like for sales stuff three out of five weeks. Um, and so like having really comfortable clothing was really important to me. Um, I tried those pants on, they worked with the suit, they worked with, uh, I could go to the bar with them, I could do whatever I wanted. I was like, these are awesome. Like that was the first time I had gone from buying, you know, H&M like cotton shirts or whatever I was buying to wanting to pay more for something that was going to be better, last longer, and be more comfortable. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm a backpacker, obviously, you know, so like that having what, a, you know, having less, but having the best is one of like, one of the best things to have, because, you know, if you got a lot of it goes with decision fatigue, just overall kind of minimal, uh, min minimalism. Um, yeah, so having having better clothing became a big thing. And then I I got really into like fabrics and comfortable clothing and I heard the Sarah Blakely thing. But at that point, nothing had really clicked. I just knew I want to do collarless business apparel. And originally it was going to be I want the the line to be collars are for dogs. We're going to do a you know, we're going to do kind of like a bird dog kind of marketing uh, campaign. Um, but the the brand and what we wanted to do with it didn't didn't wouldn't have matched that not to say it, it couldn't at some point but it it wasn't going to work so so we went a different avenue but that's where it all started it's callers are for dogs i'm going to do this campaign we're going to do business apparel and we're going to say you know fuck callers we're, callers are done uh and yeah and then it kind of evolved and, and different things came through started looking at technology and fabric then that, that's when china hit like all right how do I find the most comfortable fabric uh, and the most high tech fabric there is? And, you know, I'm looking, re reaching out and there it's the best place to do it because shipping is so damn expensive here to get all these different textile samples and to go out to all these factories and stuff would have been, you know, immensely expensive. Uh, but there it's like, all right, I can go to these factories all around. I can get them to ship me different textiles. We can develop different things. Uh, the back and forth was so much easier. There's no, I don't think I could have done, I mean, it just would have been different, but it would have been a lot harder to be here. It's, it is harder now uh, to be here and not for like developing new, new fabric and new technology. It's just, it's harder. So being there was, was helpful. And I could, I could do all these things. We can make small adjustments. We could be back and forth. Um, so a lot of the time in China was just trying to figure out the right textile. And then, you know, it goes from there to, to designing and here we are um yeah sam or go ahead andrew i uh, know you go first i got a pivoting question go ahead. oh so sam mentioned that you had you have like a material of your clothing that like transitions your or like regulates your body temperature from like you know if it's it's cold in the morning like the the shirt will keep you warm and then it'll cool you off when it gets hotter during the day uh, is this true? Like, I need to hear more on this. If so, yeah. Um, so unless this is proprietary, in, in which we'll no, say no, no. to you're, the listeners, no, you're you know, not. this is all proprietary information. That's all you gotta tell them. No, you're good. Um, so there, we licensed a technology, um, but in a, in a in a thread, and we added it to our own different mixture of of um, fabrics to make this material. But what you're talking about is the, it was originally developed for NASA for heat regulating yes. abilities. And so it's a micro encapsulated, basically tiny micro encapsulated heat cells in, in the fibers themselves that allow you to, you know, if you're gonna go in, say it's really hot outside, you're sweating and you go into a, you know, you're in Arizona, so you probably know this, you go into a room, you might get those chills and like, oh, you know, it's going to help with those transitions and, and bring you back to equilibrium by about three degrees. Um, wow. And that three degrees might not seem like a lot, but it, it actually, you know, it, it can keep you can keep you happy. Um, and so that is 
so we basically took that part of it and then added the you know the wrinkle resistance the stain resistance the the highly you know high stretch material so you know the the idea i guess is to get you through your day without worrying about your clothing and yeah and to make it make it so you can do all the things you can need to do and not be held back uh you hit all the touch points on my end with the first one being uh wrinkle free um I'm, I'm i'm a guy that's always stuck in wrinkles man i went to kowalski's and i got this like wrinkle, <laughs> wrinkle spray so i don't have to iron things and like it helps a little bit but you're looking at it like I, i'm so wrinkled up right now and i hate it um but those are what you have right there is not really i mean i guess there right. are a little bit but they're not super it's not wrink a lot of people i feel like sometimes i'm and i'm maybe i'm just really super self-conscious about it because i made these shirts people are like those there's wrinkles there. And I'm like, that's not a damn wrinkle. That's a, you know, that's just the material. It doesn't crease. Yeah. yeah. Like totally. typical dress shirts that do. Um, you got, you got me sold. I'm all aboard. Um, I would love for you to kind of break a couple things down for us. Uh, yep. Where can we buy it? Um, what is the, what's like the best sellers? A uh, little, little price point. Give us, I mean, you, you've already done an incredible job of pitching it. Cause, uh, I'm I'm gonna hop off this call. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a purchaser, um, but I would I just might, love I might, to join me. Yeah, I might even say you might want to wait a little bit because we got something fun coming soon. Ooh. Uh, oh, so yeah, it might a be little, a, like a like a Black Friday holiday. Well, it'll come before Black Black Friday. Uh, okay. We've just got a 2.0 that's coming out with some some fun additions and some fun like improvements that we because yeah, okay. there the first one I think was great. Uh, but it could be better. And so we, we kind of reinvented a little bit and made the adjustments that needed to be made. Dude. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, uh, how's it going? You know, how's business <laughs> been? But you just said you're coming out with a 2.0. Say less. Business is booming. Um, well, it's, it's been – I, I wouldn't say it's booming. We're, we're, we've had our struggles. Um, and a lot of it has been from, you know, it, these things take longer. So like getting the product has taken longer. So we ran the Kickstarter and, you know, originally planned on having this product. Originally, it was like February, end of February. You know, I should have never said that. Uh, and it ended up just being a lot later. And for me, that was and they, people expect it on Kickstarter. But for me, it's hard because I, when I say I'm going to do something, I'm, I'm going to do it. And it was difficult to to have to tell people there was actually a period of time you know one of the things i learned throughout that process there was a period of time where i was i didn't want to tell people something because i was scared that i didn't know all the information wow. and one someone told me who cares if you don't know and it was actually a big it was a big i it changed everything for me in, in this sense and they were like tell them you don't know they just want an update you know people just want an update they they backed your project they just want to hear what's going on and why it's taking longer. They, they, they're going to be more upset that they're just not hearing anything. So that fear is just don't don't worry about it. Just tell people what's going on. Um, but yeah, uh, long story short, it took a lot longer. We got things there. We had a big issue. Um, you know, some of the products uh, we got products out, but a lot of some people didn't get their their products. And then we waited for the next production run. So uh, we were out of in, 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 which is a good thing. We were out of uh, out of inventory for a while, but yeah, it hasn't always been pretty. <laughs> I mean, as it it never is. You guys, you guys know very well. <laughs> no, we know very well, um, and especially yeah. this year, man. I mean, supply chain stuff is yeah. a nightmare. There's nothing going. I mean, you're talking to Decky Supply Chain over here, who needs all the wood in the world. And all I mean, yeah. you're, not, you're not in a you're not in the wood business anymore. You're more, you're more in the <laughs> You're in the metal business. Um, I'm in. I'm in the mechanical piping and electrical business now. I I've been waiting. I we have to order stuff uh, that have eight eight month lead times. Like I missed a I missed a due date on something like earlier. Actually boy. today officially, uh, because I didn't get something ordered that was like four months ago. I didn't, like so you're ordering a lot of you, you're you're ordering a lot of this equipment as well. You're not just figuring out how how to put it together. You're yeah. Are you Well they, yeah. they have like, drawings that tell us how to put it together, but I yeah. I order all the I make sure all the materials are correct. Yeah. I, I purchase it all. 
Um, I get it organized. I tell the guys what to do on a day-to-day basis, and then I try and organize the job so that it gets done in a timely manner to the uh, yeah. the expectations of uh, said power plant so that the, yeah. so everything can go smoothly. Um, things don't go smoothly most times. Uh, <laughs> no, they don't. But, but damn it, we pivot, and we yeah. and we don't have any problems. Uh, there's never a solution we can't solve, or never a problem we can't solve. Sorry. Um, yeah. But yeah, dude, that supply chain's so bananas nowadays, and it sounds like it's gonna continue for a little bit of time, unfortunately. Um, yeah. So so explain to me a little bit. I I really loved what you said about like if you don't know, then just tell the people. I feel like Wait, uh, before you get okay. to this, I asked a question. I didn't get the. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. The listeners are on the edge of their seat right now. Um, where where do they need to go to get the? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> link, link in bio, dude. That, that is a. Uh, thank you for bringing that back. Yeah, you can go to cheegs. dot com. C h e e g s. dot com, or we're on Instagram at uh, shop cheeks. Yeah. Got what's it. what's yeah. the uh, impetus behind the name of cheeks? Um. At the time. At, it came a little it came during sarah blakely's thing so i wanted something to mean nothing so i could define what it meant but i want it to somehow connect to me as well um and so it's a little bit of a play i guess off the off the name but also just something that can be defined for whatever you know oh I, that makes sense i can define exactly what what that word means from now on which yeah. uh chad he could if be I, a lot i do a good job yeah Cheeks, Cheeks sounds like your login name at like St. Thomas, like you know, C He Guard, but they shortened it down because He Guard's a little you know, too long. Yeah, now I'm getting some people are calling me that, and I don't know if that's I don't know if I'm uh, I don't know if I'm on board with that, but uh, I guess I I did that to myself. You know, I, it, no, I don't, don't think on that train for <laughs> sure. uh, Decky and I are the back pocket boys through and through. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's that's fair. My name's We'd Declan. They call me Decky. It's it is what it is, man. It, it it takes on a creature of its own. But I mean, you know, Cheeks isn't necessarily terrible for your brand. Um, just just being honest with you, you know, man to man here, brand guy to brand guy. Uh, yeah. It, the worst situation you can find yourself in, and there may be potential worst situations, but the 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 one that comes to my mind is if people start calling you Chuggy Cheeks, and if someone's calling you that. Then we, then you know we need to shut the business down. Yeah, rebrand immediately. Yeah, if someone ever calls you Chugi in the fashion industry, you know <laughs> you did something wrong. Uh, call, yeah, collarless business apparel that could be used anywhere. Uh, done by Chugi Cheeks. Done by two Chugi Cheeks. That could be, that could be brutal. But you could create. <laughs> I would like maybe a spinoff account uh, that you could create uh of people just wearing h&m like cotton shirts and that could be chuggy cheeks like that could just be your page where you draw oh, attention yeah. to the bullshit and set then, it set it up yeah uh, yeah set that up dude get the memes running get the pictures running of like chuggy oh. looking people and then suck that data and then sell them what they need which is cheeks this gets it was very funny um this gets me to like another side note but creating just a page to to sought to do another thing so early on before i actually had the name figured out before everything i was like oh screw it i'm gonna figure out i'm gonna do a page callers are for dogs we're gonna do like dogs saying vulgar funny stuff to one another and doing weird stuff all wearing collared shirts and that was gonna be like that was how i was gonna set up the page at least to when we did start we'd have uh, some kind of following and make that switch or, or just use that page to, uh, to bounce off ours. And it went, I mean, only went for a few months till I realized we're not going to end up using this. Uh, this isn't the, the vibe, but it was a funny, uh, it was a funny little spinoff. Yeah. Uh, good little yeah. venture. Yeah. A little, a little good little venture. Right. And you, and you got to pivot, you got to figure out what you need to do, but, yeah. uh, throughout the whole process i mean it's something that you give a shit about which i think is something that we can all relate to here and i think that's the that's the cool part i mean um we can't sit here and judge you off the the moves you've made in the creation of cheeks and be like oh wow i should have done this and not that or x y and z i i just really appreciate hearing your story arc of like these last three years of just like you've got you've really thrown yourself out into the universe to like really give yourself a a wholehearted experience of life and like it sounds like you've really taken that initiative and done and really lived your life with a solid purpose and uh we love i just love listening to people to like explain that and then share that passion man and uh so through all that i just what what i would like to know and and it's 
kind of comes back to the you know the that give a shit mentality but what is your average quality and this is something that's like something that you could that you just do really care about um but you um you know sometimes you're really good at it, sometimes you're really bad uh and and you really but you really care about it uh, what is that one yeah. thing that you always think you need to be improving on or your average quality a lot of things nice like a lot but um i think yeah most things um focus is something that i feel like I'm, I'm really good at at times but i'm also i go through like uh i go i go through different periods of times waves of when i'm really really dialed in and that's like not just for hours i mean like weeks months and then i'll have a certain amount of time where i just can't i can't get in that routine i can't get into those uh I can't get my mind straight where I'm really, really dialed in and going and I can, you know, and, and it's funny. I feel like now I've toyed around, I've figured out the tools for me that work, but yet I still don't use them, which like, you know, during those, those times where you, you're screwing it up, like, you know, what's right, right? Like, you know, what works, you know, what you're doing when you're in, when you're the best you, when you're dialed in, but yet there's like these waves and I wish I could just get rid of those, uh, those down waves, I guess. Um, no, the down waves give you perspective for the up waves for sure. Uh, that's fair. You got to yeah. embrace the down, uh, for sure. It just to, just to pull yourself out of it. Um, but yeah, isn't that just kind of a funny paradox of life that like you could be, you could be the guy to give all the advice in the world and you kind of know it, you can see someone's situation so clearly and know exactly what they need to do where like you could have something very similar going on internally yet you don't have an answer for it. I think that's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. And I, I think another thing with like the, I, I feel I'm a, uh, I relate to that wholeheartedly. The idea of, uh, Oh, I gotta do the same. I don't think I did it. Yeah, dude, Andrew, your screen just started glitching like the A7s typically do. And I was like, no way. Oops. I just have such uh, a good eye for this. I know. <laughs> Been slacking. I think I missed it for probably 10 minutes. That's um, right, dude the i the the dial in mentality or that when you find that flow state for an extended period and then one day you wake up and it's not there um and then you start scrambling and thinking to yourself like what happened why did i not eat right did i not get enough sleep should i have been working out am i not making enough time to sit and be and meditate am i uh, not get, am i have i not talked to my family in a little bit and you're just mind's just racing what's the answer what's the answer why can't i get into my flow state right now yeah. and um one thing that i've been genuinely working on the last six weeks is when though when these moments arrive uh, arrive i step back and i have and say there is no answer i don't want there to be an answer i don't want there to be a reason because it's better if there it's almost better if there's none and i'm just like and i think to myself I'm not in that flow state and that's okay. Yeah. And then I just continue on with my day and I find myself picking up the pace again without trying to like backtrack, figure out an answer and then come back to where I am. It's more so just like I'm here and that's okay because yeah. eventually I know if I just continue to be, I'll pick right back up. Um, it's not as it's way uh, harder than it's, it's easier said than done. But it's a practice that I, it's, it's like just recognizing yeah. that I'm not in a flow state and that's okay. That, yeah, that resonates with me a ton. It's a, I, I love that. I will, cause I feel like I actually heard you guys in the, um, the one, your podcast with Sam, you guys talked about something similar that also resonated with me was just like, we had this, the high points where we're, we're, we're busy, right? And then we have these low points and we feel like we have to still be busy. We feel like we still have an obligation to stay in this and find things to do. But the whole point, I mean, I, yeah, I don't, that's not, we just have to realize that that's not the point. The point is to, to get the work done and then move on and figure out and take those time. Like when you have free time, like you said, sit back and be okay with it uh, yeah. and enjoy it. Cause that's, that's the whole point is to have the time <laughs> dude i heard uh, this uh great analogy today from uh kfc he had this new interview <laughs> that came out uh kfc barstool he's 
Kevin Clancy. He has a show called The Kevin Clancy Show where he talks with other bloggers and stuff. And uh, he's talking with Robbie Berger, who's uh, the host of the Brilliantly Dumb podcast. This guy who's got that crazy East Coast voice. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, anyways, he uh, he was talking about this mantra or mentality of like, enjoy your swimming pool, uh, where it's like people in life like strive to like get the big house and have the swimming pool and then like the famous thing that happens is like no one ever uses their fucking swimming pool when they get it uh so he's like either realize that you don't want it uh or use it when you have it and i think that's just a great mentality of like you know if you're not somewhere where you want to be like and you know where you want to be like you know continue to fight to get there but like recognize what you have like we all have swimming pools to some degree that we can swim in right now like we know we're in a certain position that we wish we were probably a couple years ago so just like instilling that perspective and knowing that we're in the spot exactly where we need to be and we need to start swimming a little bit more and enjoying it um rather than looking so far ahead now there's also uh, something to be said about like you know there is a aspect and a good thing to look ahead but um Dude, you gotta you gotta yeah. enjoy it while it lasts, you know. Totally, absolutely, man. And you know, there there are those moments where we just unpacked. Pressure becomes stress, anxiety is rising, and you feel like the world's crumbling before you. Um, and I'd like to ask you, Chad, in these moments, what's in your back pocket? What makes you you to allow yourself to get out of these situations? I have a lot of energy. Uh, and when it, when, it, when it comes down to it, uh, I'm going to figure it out. We had a, uh, yeah. If, if, it, if it needs to be done, I got the energy to do it. Did you um, have a story to back that up? It sound, like as an energy guy, it sounded like you had an energy surge just now. Yeah, we just we had a on our first production run, um, we had everything arrived and, and super excited right this is the first time we have i've actually got the final product uh in my hands and you know we we manufacture in a few different places um we manufacture in taiwan and in mexico all you know our our model is is fair wages sustainability um in the end uh we it doesn't always mean that it's here. Uh, and it also doesn't mean that we actually don't have the capabilities to do some things here. So um, this that's besides the point, but we, we send everything uh, from Taiwan, it arrives. It's supposed to have been checked uh, for quality inspections and I open it up and, and I'm, you know, I'm like, holy cow, this is, I can't sell this. I'm gonna have to uh, reach out to all of these backers and I'm going to have to say that I have to either, you know, cancel it now and start, try to start this venture later, or, you know, this is, you know, that's where my head goes first. And I, I called this person who's an amazing uh, friend of mine and, and, and she goes, I remember it. And it was, it was just like, she goes, all right, go to, um, go to Joanne Fabrics right now, buy six pairs of, of, of scissors. You're going to go to my studio and you're going to go through these shirts. And, and that, that was just, I just needed that little, like, you know, you're in that situation. I would have gotten there, but it was a nice, it was a nice, uh, way to get out of that, that bad, like, Ooh, we're not gonna be able to do this, uh, to, all right, it's, it's going to happen. We'll make it happen no matter what, um, go there, call as many people as I can. We're going through every shirt one by one. Um, it takes about five, five minutes of shirt finishing, you know, snipping, if they didn't, you know, if they didn't meet the quality expectations, they, they got sent back. Um, but we went through all of these shirts one by one, it took 150 hours. Um, and obviously, you know, there's sleeping involved in between there, but every day for 150 hours, uh, got it done. And, and that was just one, like, when it comes down to it, it's going to get done. Uh, yeah. And the energy helps. Dude. Sounds like it, man. Uh, high energy guy, Andrew. What were you gonna say? Sorry. Yeah, I just I want Chad. I want your energy on my side, uh, <laughs> dude. You got a lot of energy. I could see it. Yeah. Oh, hey. Between the two of us, Deck and I. Uh, yeah, you. I've heard you good. guys are you guys are gym five five a.m. footballers. That's right. That's, yeah, that's exactly what we are. Uh, at yeah. the same time, dude, I love your energy. And as an energy guy, 
uh, you need to surround yourself with other energy guys because I'm not here to carry the energy. I like yeah. to bring the energy, but I only carry it. I got to utilize other people's energies. Um, yeah, it's, it's very important to diversify your portfolio when it comes to the energy business. <laughs> you, you do. I agree. It sounds like we ought to be here in our future. Yes. Amen yeah. to that. Yeah. yeah. Andrew brings we'll, a really we'll, good we'll trade point. some energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The energy is a currency. People forget that it sometimes. It is. A hundred percent. And the people you're around are going to change it. And the crazy thing is that there's sometimes there's energy producers and there's sometimes energy suckers. And you got to, and sometimes it's good to give energy to someone who needs to, some sucking. But there's other times <laughs> yeah. that, you know, that we need, we need to be producing uh, energy and, and putting on for our, for our, for the greater community. Uh, yeah. So for our fellow, for our you guys, collarless dogs. For our fellow collarless dogs, dude. Exactly. They're all out there. Where are my dogs at? Are they barking or not? Yeah. Are they wearing collars or not? Because if they're not, they're my dogs. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I, I always like imagine like input you know fraternity uh like white males with collared shirts and just like with text underneath that just says puppies you know because they're not dogs. Oh, the the marketing opportunity there i think it was there but when we got into the you know the price point that we were going to be at and the like the technology the mm -hmm. brand didn't match that right. uh but i i do still to this day i think there's there is a space so if someone wants to do collars of dogs um i'm it's not going to do it for now so it's there <laughs> here you here you are yeah there outsource. you go outsource yeah outsource it you're welcoming but, uh, it into the business you're just not physically doing it i i i've exactly. been there before don't worry, man. Yeah, but uh, I, I do. I commend you guys. You guys do a great job of. I've listened to the ones I've. You guys do bring a lot of. You guys bring Andrew. You too. You bring good energy out there, man. You guys do a lot of cool stuff. Appreciate, appreciate it, man. man. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, and that's pretty much our goal, man. Just uh, yeah, our energy is uh, actually rocket fuel for us to get to Mars one day. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's little doses at a time. You know, you're not going to get to Mars overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. Same concept. Yeah. Uh, so with that, I, I'd actually just like to ask you, now that I think about it, like what does, you, what does your future look like on Mars, Chad? Hmm. Um, I'd like to have people, I mean, I'd like to be the in, in innovator behind clothing. I'd like to offer, uh, opportunity to, for people to express their different, um, different fashion and I want to break down all these traditional norms that are pretty dumb. So like collared shirts and ties, there's uh, the only reason that those are really a part of our culture comes down to conformity power. Uh, in the past, like collars have gone a long way, a long way uh, originally. So I'm getting a way back story, but originally it's like it came down to if you could have a white collar, you were rich because you had multiple servants that were doing your laundry. Then it went down to removable collars so that the working class could get in that game, right? So they could keep a, a removable collar clean. Then it comes down to like cellu celluloid uh, um, collars that kill people, you know, or tight on your neck. Either way, history about collars is so we've just stayed to this thing because it's just been the way it has been and it's wrong it's com uncomfortable so yeah i want to offer people something different i want the i want i want to see way less collars out there um and so that's the mars is like no collars mars i don't want to see any color i don't want dude wow they're, they're yeah they're uncomfortable there's no reason to have them and so yeah the, the goal would be fuck collars uh, I don't want to see him anymore. That's Mars. Dude. A colorless world. Fuck yeah, man. I'm right yeah. there with you. I think that'd be yeah. sick. I love I yeah. love how you've niched down on something so specific. I, I really think you're going to have success. Well, thanks. We, we're pushing. Love it, dude. Yeah. Awesome, man. Uh, I support it. I'm uh, As someone who feels like um, they will be a... a a contributing leader. I'm not going to be the leader of Mars. I'm not going to be the mayor of Mars, but I'm going to be. Oh, dude, you should be though. I'm going to have a vital presence on Mars. Um, that is that is the objective. Uh, I will be on that first shuttle to Mars with with the fellow um, explorers that so do trust that journey. And so you, uh, you want to be the first? Yeah, I'm on the first shuttle to Mars. <laughs> That's why I like our business plan. I love it. I love good space people. You know, I love the people who love space. I love that. You guys are already winners in my book, no matter what. 
It's uh, space we had to guys. Build, we have to. We're, we're space guys. We got to build into the business model. You know, people are like, yeah. "What's your five year plan?" We're like, "What's your pl- five year plan for space?" You know, there's a lot of things uh, that we have to talk about there, and you know, that's why we're fucking going at a thousand miles an hour, baby. Uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. Uh, I did just think of something though, because my mom and Andrew's mom and many moms across uh, the globe here and the universe uh, are big time collar people. Uh, they, you know. My mom's always like, don't, don't you dare, you know, go no tie at a wedding. Um, you know, maybe I'm don't ooh, like, dagger. don't, you know, she's, she's, she's a conformist. We'll call her what it is, yeah. you know, and, and it's nothing against my mom, my sweet, sweet mother, great woman, Maureen. Uh, yeah. but you know, she, she loves colors and I would have a hard time pitching her a cheeks look <laughs> at Easter mass. Uh, or yeah, maybe I gotta, I gotta sell the moms. Yeah, I mean, moms buy clothes for the kids, and uh, grandmas buy clothes for their grandkids. And you know, it, yeah. this is a vicious cycle that's been going on for years, as long as callers have been alive. Um, so we got to figure this one out. Uh, we could we could work through it now, uh, work through it yeah. later. I think <laughs> I think this is something that's going to need to be a constant conversation at the Cheeks Summit every year. Yeah. Um, yeah. How are we going to win over the moms? Oof. We do need to, yeah. We need to fight the traditional or no, traditional norms are usually passed on by the moms. You're right. Absolutely. Get, I yeah. mean, it, it, at the end of the day, I mean, Deck. I think we've come to this realization, but we like time and time again, but we forget this realization. I mean, we are a pro mom podcast, but we haven't truly understood why. Uh, I mean, we love our moms. I love my mom, Carol. If you're listening, I love you. Um, but going back to like the Hannah Perez podcast. Um, well, what was the product that she is? Uh, she's getting ready, or she's starting to sell. Um, Something to do with moms. It's like a mom care. <laughs> it's like a, a sack. I don't know. Shit, that's not the way to pitch it. Uh, <laughs> it was something to do look it up. with yeah, it was something to do with mom. <laughs> and then we were like, you know, who you really need to get to is grandmoms because they're the ones that are going to be watching the kids, and you know, it's always going back to. I, the, the hierarchy of moms really runs business and people aren't appreciating it enough. And that's what I'm getting at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or I just need to target people with no moms. Oh, oh sure. yeah. All right, all right. That's a good pivot. Not I like that bad pivot. idea. We just need the moms when it comes time for like Christmas, you know, well, mom. at least for the meantime, until we can, you know, until we have the, 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 the money to really, change all the mom's minds well okay maybe this you bring up a good point though we're not gonna ever change the mom's minds but we gotta infuse the culture of no collar to be so cool that kids are asking their moms for cheeks apparel for christmas just like just like what untucked and the moms have to be okay with it and the moms have to be okay with it i think that yeah well i can convince the kids yes i can i can i can convince the people or the 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 guys who are going to wear it Hundred percent. But the you know yeah, convincing the mothers. I think I can even convince the girlfriends easily. Hundred percent. We have no problem. Mom, moms are a little bit more. Uh, yeah, they're a little bit more old fashioned sometimes. Not all moms. We got to talk about know. Untuck It, the Untuck It brand, though. Dude, I mean, they have done a phenomenal job. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Granted, they have they collars. Changed, they changed the game. But yeah. but they they at least broke the barriers. But they of changed shirt something in. big. Yes. They changed something big, which I think yeah, I commend them for that. Like. Some of the, some of the, a model that we could potentially use here at Cheeks Corp. Yeah, I think a lot of yeah, it's so funny because they were one of the. There's so many companies that do take these strategies, but they haven't really changed. They might change the sizing, they change the model of how they get the clothes, but really, there's only a few companies that have changed the actual look, the style. Have changed like the whole entire apparel, and that is Untuck. It did it. I mean, in in a way, for sure. Uh, and we're gonna do it. So, all right, I'm in. Uh, well, sweet. Yeah. Um, you know, all of it is it 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 is a challenge. Um, in terms, you know, we've talked it we've talked it through. Um, these past hour and nine minutes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the um, at the end of the day, like a lot of this is, you know, each step that you arrive at is it ends up becoming a challenge. Um, but with that, I mean, we we face it head on. We we embrace and we move forward, right? And the totally. the uh. Speaking of challenge, so like how we even got in touch with you, how we met you is through Sam, who challenged us to get you on the podcast. Now we'd like to continue yeah. this trend. Uh, Chad, who do you think we should have on the back pocket? 
Yeah. Um, the person that comes to mind is I've got a who's. I mean, there might be some connection somehow there, but Dick Polipnik is. Well, I've actually got two that Heard might that be, kid. but one of them, one of them has got a uh, a similar last name, so I don't want to give it to you. But uh, but he's doing some really cool stuff. Footprint Project. Um, but D- Dick Polipnik is a marketing company, um, and he's a super charismatic young guy. I met him, and he had like three companies going when he was, you know, eighteen, nineteen years old. Uh, he's just he would be amazing to talk to and just hear what's going through his head and what his story's been. Totally, man. Challenge yeah. accepted. I've, Challenge I've, accepted. Yeah. I've yeah, definitely Dak. heard that kid before. I was going to say, yeah. Dick, when you hear some someone's name like that, Dick Pliknik, uh, you don't forget it? Oh, yeah, never. Not once. Mm-hmm. Not, yeah. not, not a day goes by, not thinking about Dick Pliknik, let me tell you. <laughs> just yep. doesn't, yeah, doesn't, yeah. You can never forget that name. You can't name. forget that name, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he uh, met him at a Lincoln drink, if I remember correctly, from back from back when the Lincoln drink existed. If you ever, did you ever go yeah. to those, or do you remember what Lincoln no, drink was? No, I, I okay. did not. No. Uh, one of our buddies. What, what was it? It was exactly what the name says. It's, uh, it was a like a Lincoln networking drink. event, like a networking thing. A networking event over over drinks. They'd have like uh, a panel with three uh, bigger people in the Twin Cities, and then you'd have like a an MC who would ask them different questions and different stuff like that, and then. The majority of the time, it was just networking, link, and drink. Yeah. And it was sick, man. And uh, it ended with when uh, Brandon, the guy who founded it, uh, our good buddy Brandon Polzuk, he uh, ended up going and taking a full-time job at Iconic. And he actually lives out in Scottsdale. Um, For a second there, you, you lowered your voice, and I thought you were going to tell me he passed away. Oh, uh, no. And so him moving moving on, it sounds, sounds, sounds great. Yeah, no, <laughs> guy's killing it. Guy's not. Yeah, guy's awesome. way alive. So, couldn't be more alive. Super alive. Super alive. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. Sorry, my I, I got to work on my cadence. No, no, no. Uh, it was a it was a pleasant surprise. You got me pumped up that he was pumped. You know, <laughs> yeah, that I he guess was alive. I got the people had, interested. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. He's like, yeah, he. Yeah, he went moved on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did do that, dude. I did I do thought, that. I mean, I know he's alive. I, at one point, I thought he's going to die. <laughs> Christ! I guess, uh, I guess that's something Jack, I can work on. Damn it! Is something you can work on. What your cadence as a podcaster? Cadence is important. We got listeners. Um, yeah, but we, we got listeners. They trust us <laughs> very, very deeply. Uh, but Chad, this is this rocks. Uh, this has been a yeah. really solid hour, and I really appreciate you hopping on the back pocket to hash out your story. I mean, the last three years have been a wild ride. What's super cool is we just documented some of that. Uh, in three years from now, you'll be able to listen back to this and be like, shit, I really hadn't accomplished that much because look where I am now. In uh, three years, less people are going to be wearing collars. Less people are going to be wearing collars. They're not all not going to be wearing it, but less people. Less people, and that's the most important part. And uh, mm-hmm. in doing so, we will get to the moms, and we will uh, have a full customer journey in line. Uh, but to uh, finish this podcast off, I got one final question for you, Chad. Um, what did you learn today from the moment that you woke up to when we're having this conversation? Um, so today I went to the customs. I had, I picked up a big shipment of, of stuff and I went into the place and I realized this is a different location than the last one. And I asked them and they were like, yeah, we, and I've had this in my mind that this supply chain thing is kind of bullshit. I think it's just like the the demand has gone so high up, but the supply chain is now caught up. It's just like people are buying so much more because they're stuck at home and they've got more money than they did before. Not all people. I'm not saying that there aren't a ton of people struggling, but uh, there is this, you know, uh, there's been checks that have been given out. People are sitting at home. They might not have the same kind of expenses. So I've had this theory that, oh, Supply chain is just, it's just slow because there's a lot more going on. And I go there and they're like, no, actually, like things, air has been really slow or we haven't had any air. Like during COVID, there was no air uh, traffic, which I thought was really interesting. I'm like, oh, but I, I, I guess I, it's not as much what I learned. It's the realization that uh, not everyone, like our business model right now allow us for flying, which we'd like to stop because of carbon footprint. But, you know, supply chains are messed up, but they're all just going port wise. But air is still very slow. Interesting. Yeah. And that Jeff, was, that it, was probably not what you expected, expected. but <laughs> no, yeah. 
I hear you, man. It feels expensive. I no, I yeah. think it's kind of fun to get your own perspective on maybe rumors or things that you are kind of commonly accepted as knowns. So like, yeah, supply chain so messed up, blah blah blah. Like, but like when you really look into it, or when you physically go walk to the customs office and ask the people on the front lines, like trying to get your own perspective, you know, changes things, man. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right on, man. Well, sweet. Awesome. Excellent hey, thank work. you for, yeah, thanks for the time, you guys. This was really fun. Absolutely, dude. And were you talking, standing man. the whole time? <laughs> yeah. Dude, are you tired? No, I, do, I usually stand. I love, yeah. I don't know. It's fucking crazy. I told, I definitely was like, why is your ceiling, like, why are you so close oh, to yeah. the ceiling? No, I'm, but I'm, you've been standing. I've been standing. Yeah, I got a standing desk. Sick. Dude, it's, hell it's yeah. Awesome. What a warrior. Dude. It, I've got way more energy when I'm standing, which is three hundred. Maybe I don't need podcasts. In sorry to cut you off, three hundred thirty-one podcasts in. We've never had a guest stand all time. the whole time. Crazy. Really? Yeah, dude, you're no. the first one. Oh, <laughs> that that's mind blowing to me. Actually, I'm surprised. I feel like standing desks are are in, man. They are. The the the, the yeah, they are popular. Very popular. See, you get to move around. You can do anything. I get to stretch during the day instead of going down and sitting down, like doing something else. I just stretch and then go back in. Right on, dude. Well, that hey, take yeah. <laughs> take, take a load off, man. You freaking earned it. <laughs> Thank you. Christ. Well, right on, dude. Uh, yeah. yeah, Chad. Awesome, awesome time hanging out yeah. with you, man. Um, I we should have said congratulations on the uh, the half Iron Man. Congratulations oh, yeah. on you. your uh, bike trip around the Baltics and, and throwing yourself into China, and uh, and rocking cheeks, man. I think I think the fuck the collar movements is going to be something impressive. Uh, the fuck the I'm, collar movement. You have our support uh, and our endorsement entirely on Earth and on Mars, and uh, we're excited to freaking build this thing with you, man. Uh, yeah. Happy to support you. I think one one thing I'd like to add that I didn't didn't about the the business side of things is. One of the most important pillars of, of Cheeks is that we are really focused on the sustainability portion of yes. it. So we do, we are carbon neutral as well. Um, and yeah, I just want, I don't think I mentioned that early on. So that's an important part. It's like fair wages, sustainability, um, doing everything the right way because we we're at the time where we don't really have a choice and people shouldn't have a choice. Like if yeah. you start a business now and you're, it's one thing if you've already, you've already got all the bad tendencies and you got to fix it, but you can't start a business now and, do have it bad tendencies. The wrong way. Yeah. yeah. No, it's an so. expectation, man. And I, you know, for the people yeah. listening, you know, definitely go give these guys a follow. Like you said, sustainability, fair wages, um, all of that is right on the front page. Uh, and and you you wear it proud, man. Um, like I said, stoked to have you. And uh, thanks yeah. for being on, dude. Yeah. Thank you. Have an That's awesome day, you guys. Sweet. That's a wrap, dude. Awesome. <laughs>